Hey everybody, welcome to the Digital Imaging Channel. I'm Will, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, paper scanning and how to approach your paper scanning project. And the episode is called Breaking Down the Box. So, paper scanning can be pretty messy and it can be intimidating. If you only plan on doing this once, which you probably don't want to do the same project twice, you want to do it right. So, we have some recommendations on how you can approach your scanning project so you can make sense of what needs to be done, how to go after, how to plan for it, and make sure you choose the right options so you don't up, end up uh, spending money and making a mistake and then having to redo it later on. So let's get into it. All right, so the first, uh, first step we'll take is really just a, a big overview of where to go. and. The best, um, at least the, the what we think is best, is going big to small. So you start the the high level stuff and work your way down, and so we'll hit all these smaller portions of the overall project as we go along. But the idea of big to small, you start with project, so your project as in entirety. Uh, then you move down a level to the document types, so the different types of records you're going to be working with. Then boxes, let's assume that your, your records are in boxes, or at least by the time they get to us, they'll be in boxes. Then within a box, you have folders, files, and you know binders, things like that, that separate each of the records. Uh, within those folders and um, binders and whatnot, you have the pages. So you have the, the, the actual pages of a record, like a student record, let's say. On the pages, you'll have fasteners. That's the next level. So staples, paper clips, rubber bands, whatever it is that's holding a paper together. Maybe they're loose leaf, maybe they're not, but we very often see fasteners. And then the underlying condition of the actual uh, material. So the condition, is it good quality, uh, fair quality, or poor quality? Because that will affect um, how you look at your project before you work with a, a scanning partner. So starting big to small it just gives you a good idea of the whole of your project where you might need to go and where the the hiccups may come in okay the first real level is the project level and that's the elephant and how do you eat an elephant you do it one bite at a time so if you want to take a look at the the project as a whole the elephant you're looking at things like when you want to start your project, maybe you have a completion date in mind, you need to be done by a certain point. Overall costs, so you know, ballpark pricing of what it could be. You're looking to potential vendors, you're asking people internally of what they need, so different stakeholders, maybe end users, business unit groups, whatever it is. You're looking at the project as an entire, uh, an entire whole, not the individual parts just yet and how you'll get it done, but basically what you want done and why. So. That's the first step of just the overall project idea. What do you want done? When do you need it done? What's your budget? Things like that. That is the project level before you start diving into the next uh, next parts of the, the paper scanning project, the nitty gritty. So take a look at it that way. Figure out what you want to do with this project and start there. All right, the next level down is what we call document types, or doc types for short. And if you work with us, we'd ask you, okay, you have, let's say, 200 boxes of records, we'd say, well, what are the different doc types? And that basically means within that 200 box project, how are they organized? How are they distinct from each other? Now, if the entire project is all just one thing, like student records, okay, that's fine, that's one doc type. but you may have it broken down, let's say your law enforcement agency, you have, uh, we have uh, 150 boxes of criminal records, and then we have 25 boxes of financial documents and 25 boxes of personnel files. So you're really looking at what are the specific distinct types of records within, these, within the overall project that would uh, make it uh, distinguishable for you know, the company you're working with, let's say it's us, when we're scanning, when we receive the material, so we know, okay, these are the criminal records and that's gonna be scanned in this way, these are the HR files, these will be scanned in this way, et cetera, et cetera. So 
once you kind of have the whole project figured out, you're on the doc types, just, just determine, let us know what are the different types of records and how they're going to be organized and you know, what's distinct about the different boxes or the different files that are part of the project. Now we're on boxes. So when we think of boxes, we think of the standard uh, banker's box. It's one of these things here. So about 15 inches by 12 and 10. So kind of what you imagine when you store books in your garage or if you're moving or just general office boxes. This is the classic uh, unit of measurement for paper scanning. Usually you can equate everything to how many boxes you have and this is the type of box we we like to use because it's just very familiar and you can kind of base everything around that uh, when you get to amount of material. So you've already gone through the project idea as a whole. We talked about document types and let's look at this again. Let's say you say I have a bunch of boxes. I have those 200 boxes that we talked about earlier, that example. And then we're looking at this. We'd see, all right, box 52. Uh, personnel files with a date of birth prior to 1955. So using this example, let's say you had 100 boxes of the 200 or personnel files, we would want to know is this box 52 out of 200 or box 52 out of just the 100 personnel files. Um, the other boxes may be labeled, you know, personnel with date of birth between 1956 and 60 and then 61 through 65, whatever it is. But in this instance, we have two indicators of uh, what this is. It's box number 52, we can use that, as well as it's the document type personnel, and then another indicator of what's going to be in this. Now, just because you have it written on here doesn't mean everything inside this box is going to be accurate. We've seen many times where customers think that their, their um, you know, indexes or legends are correct where it actually might have some misfiled records but we have to start somewhere if this is how you're finding your records now you're saying ah, I'm looking for John Smith he's in box 52 you go to box 52 and John Smith is there that's great so it's at least a starting point of how you find your material now uh, but we'll use this box and the contents of it further in this video just to keep a, a running example And next up, we have folders and files. So again, going to my box here, open that up. And we have two files, so technically folders. So these folders here, we're going to look at them individually and just, just at the folder level. We're not going to get too far into the actual contents. But you look at these folders, and you already notice that they are different because one has writing on the front, the other one does not. So when you start looking internally to your, your boxes and looking at the records, the next step after box is figuring out how are they organized and how are they broken up within the box because that's critical for us to know and for us to give you a price uh, related to what you have. So when you look at these, you think, all right, well, they both have names on the tab, although they're spelled or they're organized differently. One is last name, first name, Doe Jane. The other one's first name, last name, John Smith. And actually, and then this one does not have anything underneath it on the tab. This one has a last four. And I know that that's last four of the social, uh, but if you're giving this to us and you didn't tell us that, I'd ask, what is that number? Is that a social? Is that a, a medical record number? Is that a, the end of a student number? Whatever it is, we need to know what that relates to. Then you have Jane Doe here. If we're going through and indexing by the file, are we capturing just this? Excuse me, just this? Or do you also want us to capture this? And if you say capture anything on the front, does that negate capturing what's on the tab? So there are a lot of nuances, nuances to even just the folders. Uh, it would be great if they were all organized the exact same way and they were all indexed the same way and had the exact same writing everywhere. We know that's not usually the case. So we just need some information about what are the different uh, types of records we could see and how they're, they're organized within the box. Something else you can think about is, do you want the actual folder scanned? Because let's go back to Jane Doe here. Once you scan the actual records in here, is it important to keep 
the folder? Do you need to know what was on here or is that information always going to be in the actual records? We can scan some files, uh, like this folder would easily go through a scanner. Some folders, or let's say it's a binder, you can't scan a binder. Could you take a photograph of it? Sure, that'll cost more most likely. So it's important to know, do you want this information captured or is that just because you need to know what's in there and once you get to the file, that information is also on the actual pages. Small thing, but could be important. Also, scanning the folder, including it in the digital image, allows you to always have that context of the original records. So you can always go back and see, oh, yeah, I have the, the records here, but I capture this and this, and I go, oh, I forgot that we have that number here for some reason that's not on the file. So it could be useful. It's really up to you, but we just need to know what you want to do with that, with the folder. And next, after the folder level or the, you know, the file level is the page level. And let's take an example here. So we have John Smith. So you open the folder and you have the actual pages. So some things you wanna think about are you know, the quality, the condition of the material. We'll, we'll hit that a little later too, but the condition of the pages, what fasteners on it. Uh, are you gonna want this in black and white color, uh, grayscale, are you gonna want the, uh, the, the digital images OCR, so you have text search capability, things like that that all go into the page level. Is each page a record? So like this page is one record, this page is another record, or are multiple pages part of one record? All these things are, uh, are items you can consider as you get to the page level, so you can pass on that information to us when we do the project for you so we know Okay, I'm in a folder, and at the page level, I'm going to do X. Also important will be, how are we indexing? If we're indexing by the folder level, maybe it's just whatever's in this folder, you're going to call John Smith, and then the last four of his social, which is on the folder tab. Maybe it's going to be you have a, a digital folder at the folder level, and then every individual record within that folder is also going to be a digital file. So maybe you have four or five staple documents that are all going to be, let's say, multi-page PDFs within this digital folder. So we would need to know how that's going to be indexed. Maybe we're capturing the information from, from right here. Let me make sure you can see this. You know, John Smith, and then there's a, you know, let's say, capture the last four and a date of birth. And then maybe we also need to capture this important information here. So once you get to the page level, you can also keep breaking down uh, how you're going to receive your digital files. We just need to know how and then what we're going to see. And if we don't see something on the page, what do we do then? So if we pretend that uh, you want us to capture, let's say, first name, last name, last four of social, and date of birth, so let's pretend that on this file there was no date of birth. What do we do then? It, a simple answer could be we just don't include it because it's not there. You may say, oh, if it's not on page one, you got to go to page two, and it's going to be on the bottom. I don't have it here, but pretend there was a, another date of birth on the bottom. So a lot of different ways you can go with this, but uh, when you get to the page level, it's just kind of the roots grow, and you can go a lot of different directions. So it's important to really know what you want so you can pass on those expectations to us when we do the project for you so we can get you what you need uh, in a digital version of your records. And after the page level, uh, we're getting to the fastener level. Fasteners can be staples like this. It could be, that's a John Smith file. Let's go over the uh, Jane Doe file here. You can have a paper clip, can be a rubber band, can be whatever. But something that's fastening together the, the pages. And it's important for multiple reasons. First off is preparation. Scanning is not necessarily the hard part of a scanning project because imagine if you gave me just a sheet of clean paper. That we can scan that pretty quickly. But once you start adding in you know, handling the folders and you get to the page level and I have to take off the staples, I have to uh, remove the paper clips and then figure out which pages go with with each other. Fasteners can add a lot of cost if you have a lot of them. So, I mean, like for example, you have two two staples on the John Smith file. Why? I have no idea. We've seen 
some documents that just have staples on all corners just because. We have no idea why, but the customer did that, and it requires more effort to get that ready for scanning, which then increases cost. So state, uh, fasteners are important for preparation, um, pricing, and also because it can be an indicator of a file. So let's go into the John Smith document again. I have the folder here. All right, John Smith folder, great. And we're supposed to make, uh, let's say, a PDF of every fastened or uh, you know, every record, physically um, combined record within a folder. So, all right, here's a folder. Open it, there's only one record, and it has staples. So I'm going to make this one record, easy. So I remove the staples, I scan it, there's your file. Go to the, uh, the Jane Doe file. We're going to, let's say we're doing the same thing. Everything that's fastened together in some way is going to be a record. All right, here's your folder. I pop out the file here. Oh, look, there are two fasteners. So, you know, well, there's a paper clip, so let me take that paper clip off to get it ready. And then I have two different, two files here, but one of them is also stapled. Now, why is that confusing for us? Because I'm looking at this thinking, well, the whole thing was fastened together. These three pages were fastened with the paper clip, so is that a file? Or once I remove the fastener, the, uh, excuse me, the paper clip, now I have a stapled document. So is it either one three-page file or this stapled two-page document is a, let's say, a PDF, and then this is a single-page PDF by itself. If we don't have information on, you know, from you about what that's going to be or how to, how to deal with that, basically what we do is we flag it as an exception and we'll have to contact you say, all right, we ran into something new. Here's an example. What do you want us to do with this? Once we find that out, we'll apply that uh, information to any other instances of it happening. But you can see how, let's say you have 200 boxes, which, give me a second, I'll do a quick math here. Call it 2,500 pages a box times 200 boxes, 500,000 pages. You can imagine if we're running into this a lot, that could cause a lot of slowdown and potentially increase the price or require change orders, whatever it is, if it affects us affect us significantly. So knowing your material, you're never going to know everything. We always find new stuff that pops up in projects, but having an idea of what exceptions or contingencies could appear during a project would be very helpful for us uh, as we're pricing it and as we're getting ready to start the project, just so we can be prepared. And lastly, for the uh, different aspects of a paper scanning project that can help you uh, figure out what you need to do and how to approach it, is the condition of the material. I alluded to it earlier at the page level section, but wanted to hit it here specifically because it is very important to scanning. So condition is basically the quality of the actual record. Uh, is it good condition? The, the three main options are good, fair, and poor. So good condition means nice, clean pages. Fair is, ah, eh, you might have a couple rips, tears, maybe a little bit of uh, fixing here and there. And then poor condition is just, it's a mess, it's a big hassle, and it's going to cost you more to get it scanned because of how much extra effort's involved in getting it ready to even scan, or the handling involved. So a quick example, let's say we have the Jane Doe file here again. Actually, start the John Smith. We get this. Yeah, sure, there are paper clips, but that is nice, clean material. Those are great pages, just super, super fresh. Uh, you take the staples out, those are, those are going to scan no problem, no extra handling required, very easy. Let's say we go to the Jane Doe file, and here would be a nice, nice condition material. Let's just add a couple rips here, some crumples, maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of coffee on here, right? And yes, we do see that, so... It's not, not making this up. So we get a little coffee on here and dab it around. Hopefully I don't make a mess on my, my table here, my desk. So you get something like this, and it's just kind of just a mess. And uh, this isn't, we're not making this up. We get stuff like this occasionally, not a lot. So that's a mess. Let's pretend this was actually dried, but we get something like this where it's just ripped, torn. There's stains all over it. And you know, and fasteners. This is going to require heavy prep. Heavy prep. Uh, you know, we're going to have to tape this together, 
uh, flatten it out, um, you know, so, it's, so it can actually go through the scanner and it's going to look messy. And after time, let's say there is a, a water stain, a coffee stain on something, that's going to dry out and that's going to become brittle and just fragile. We've seen documents that you can, you can barely move them without them starting to crumble and, and fall apart. And that, you know, you have 200 boxes that you think are going through high speed scanners, but then we get this kind of stuff that may require overhead scanning. So a camera that's shooting top, to, you know, uh, shooting from above, like a, like a book scanner t uh, type of scanner. And that's, that's more costly too. So the condition of the material can very much affect the project, the, the pricing, how long it takes, a lot of different things like that. So if you know that you have poor quality condition, it's important to let us know so we don't just hit it during the project and then have to put a halt to it and figure out a whole new plan. It's good to know this up front. Even if it's, hey, we have 80% of our stuff is great, 20% is 19, 20% is iffy and there are some really bad things in there, but let's hold those till the end or something like that. But getting stuff like this is not, or finding stuff like this is not fun. Uh, we wouldn't be too surprised, I guess, but if you know about it, let us know first so we can plan for that ahead of time. So we've gone through all the different parts of um, kind of what you can look for when you're when you're planning out your paper scanning project, your box scanning project, and we know that every project has its own quirks. But you know what we covered should give you a, a pretty hefty idea of what you can look for and how you can kind of figure it out and plan for it before handing it off to a scanning partner or even contacting them. So it's good to plan ahead. There will always be things in, uh, that you don't know about or you may get asked that you'll have to continue to evolve the project, but it's good to have a, a plan before you just dive in. So if you're thinking about scanning uh, your boxes, your files, whatever, whatever you have, send us an email or give us a call and we can get you a quote for that. Uh, work through uh, the project planning and the scope of work with you. We'd absolutely be happy to collaborate. And that's it for today, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.